I don't know how many of you guys have seen State of the Union with um, Chris uh, Chris Rock, where he's like, I'm a war hero, I'm this, and I'm Sharon Stone's cousin. Well, I, I am a hero of the war on terror, have prevented terrorist attacks, caught a terrorist myself. I'm cousins with the guy who was in charge of the moon landing. So yeah, and I, I don't know what the middle one he was saying was. So anyways... What I was going to tell you guys real quick, specifically Iowa voters, since tomorrow is the caucus, um, I think it's important to understand that our relationships with other countries change. And um, I, I, it's, it's really hard to get that into certain people's heads that we might not be as good of a business partner with, say, the United Kingdom. Uh-oh. But you need to get that into your head because it's the world is changing and you might elect someone who is a representative of business partners that are bad for our economy. And so when you're voting and you're going, I know he's an American, his interests are these. I am telling you who has been fighting for the American dollar for like six years well, everyone got pissed off at me, like to the point that like I have to worry about people murdering me over getting involved in the international purse business. I I, I have. And so, um, but at the same time, I do recognize the importance of certain alliances. I mean, there, there's a reason that we trust Indians to be in charge of major, major, major corporations, very, very technical things. It's because we've decided that that's who we trust. And I think that a lot of people have trouble understanding that, but what you shouldn't have trouble understanding is massive international corporations with incredible influence, trying to get into our politics to change the way that we do business. And we, and, and you as an, as an American, that's a normal person will never understand the repercussions of certain business decisions. The, specifically business decisions made by the United States government. So like it's a similar, similar, if, if Trump gave a hundred million dollars to Ukraine, just dollars, would that be bad? Yes. Why? Because currency pegging, it would go straight. Like they have all this debt to the Russians. They would have to use those dollars to give them to Russians. And then the Russians would have the money. Well, the Russians would ha have, have those dollars too. And then that, that would influence. And then that money would go into straight, straight into, it's like sending good money after bad money. But, so, are the Ukrainians our allies? They're obviously not part of NATO. Who's a better ally with us than, than Ukraine? Like, almost everyone in Europe. So, uh, all these Congress people, Europe, Ukraine is our ally. Dude, they're, they're our friend, but just because you're my friend doesn't mean you're my ally. India isn't our ally. They're not from, from a, on, on paper, they're not our ally, but the real question is, does everyone have to be our ally indefinitely? What does it mean to be our ally? Um, I, I really do think we need to readdress that question because the fact of the matter is I, I, I really don't think people understand that when it comes down to it for me, you can say he's not an economist. He's bad for the economy because he wants to do this to healthcare. It's because what healthcare is doing to people. It's not about me wanting to hurt healthcare. It's about me wanting people not to pay so much for healthcare. But what you what you know about me is how long, like, who's judging women's purse con, con, con who, who has a women's purse competition on their blog because they think they're famous? And who can cause that much of a disruption in the in the fashion world? Because I I let people know, hey Americans. Rich Americans, you are the scariest part of my economy because when you spend $4,000 on a purse, that makes a difference. That money's going somewhere. So stop spending $4,000 on foreign purses. If you want to spend $4,000 on a purse, buy one that's made here. I will say that. You know why? Because you know for a fact that I'm fighting for the big, big American economy more than the small, because the big is what matters. 
Our survival is what matters. Yeah, we can get concerned with little skirmishes over um, military bases in Kenya, but the big is what matters, which is our national security at home. And what's nice about me, I'm a guy with no that hasn't ever been in the military that can tell you off the top of their head how to defend your home. You know why? Because I studied the military that much. I stu- I studied. I've been I, like, what, what what biographies do I read? Like Stonewall Jackson was probably the last bio- well last biography I read was the generals um, about a history of American generals since uh, World War II, I believe. Um, but all I'm saying is the the one thing you know about me is that I'm gonna do what's best for the whole American economy and not so much the stock market. But don't get me wrong, the stock market matters, but would this would healthcare stocks take a hit? It's not very hard to figure out. I mean, because I, I don't want publicly traded healthcare stocks. I mean, but I mean, Dana Perino, I think she disagrees with me on, on, on that one. She thinks that we need publicly traded healthcare companies because they don't like my Medicare for all, which is not Medicare for all. It's buy a corporation, subsidize it and crush everyone for all. That's what, that's what my healthcare solution is. But all I'm saying is, you know where I stand and you know what I understand you're not going to like is me saying, I will cut off Israel's military aid. I will stop giving them money if things don't change in Israel. And and you know what I want to do? Say, say, hey, you want to have peace with the Palestinians? One state solution. Secular state. That's it. But we need a Jewish state. Okay. One state. That's my opinion. And you, you want, you want money? That's my, that's my opinion. Gaza becomes part of the, part of Israel. And they're going, dude, they're crazy people in Gaza. Yeah, some of them. Make them not crazy. Be nice to them. Isn't Israel already too small? But all I'm saying is, I, I, I don't like that messed up part of the world. And, I mean, I really don't like Jared Kushner's tone with the Palestinians. But, I don't know. That's not even a priority in my mind. But at the same time, I'm going, all right, maybe I can just cut off your money. And no one else has that idea. You know why? Because they're all in the pocket of foreign lobbyists. And I'm telling you, when you think about Washington, D.C., what is Washington, D.C. Full, full of? Foreign lobbyists. You got the English government over there right now that are that's like all over the place trying to make sure that they survive economically. And, and they want to have certain business advantages f- based on the United States. And that's good for you. And... You have the French government that has, 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 they're not spies, they're lobbyists. And you have the Israeli government that has the most lobbyists, probably. And then you have the German government. Every, every, you've got the Chinese government. Everyone's got foreign lobbyists. And so, um, at some point, you got to start questioning what other people say. And so, it's a very important for you not to know what you know. It's very important for you to, to sit there and go, what do I know? Who are my allies? Why are they my allies? Because when the resources start going down, that's when I have to decide, do I give a shit if you're a bunch of bankers and hackers? Not really, but I do understand that I love your TV and I do understand I like your artists, but like from a finance, from a, from a big picture perspective, you're not a very good business partner. You're, you're, you're a burden. And there are other countries that are burdens like that. So, um, who can think like that? Someone that's not running around kissing asses. Someone that's thinking, how am I going to make sure my country survives? And I think it's pretty obvious from the way that I've conducted myself, which sometimes it's like, why would he do that? It's because you don't understand. You don't understand like how, how, like, it's, it's crazy how Microsoft could actually be in trouble because I backed them because there are no more added shorts because th- suddenly all these people remove their shorts and, and, and like, I don't understand how that could hurt Microsoft, but then I'm also like, well, but it could have been worse if it was later, but then, but I don't fully understand what the impact is going to be of what I do, but other people do because they are planning things and they've been planning things for a long time. And that's one of the reasons our economy is like a lot of investors that look at charts are saying it's insane. doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, but that's, 
also because you don't understand um, how much we have tricked people into shorting, which is boosted our stock market, and also you don't understand um, money laundering, which matters no matter what you think. And you're and, and if you elect someone who's going to crush that money laundering, it's like, wow, our economy's screwed. And that's the other thing about you don't know who you're electing because you don't really know the interests that are behind them. Me, you know who's behind me? Former CIA. Very, very serious tech people. 